Hi guys, welcome to this page of the notes. Again, what we're doing here is we're just doing some more example problems um, with the sum and difference of cube formulas, which we got on the last page of the notes. And we just want to look at a few more example problems because they just take some practice uh, getting used to them. So what I've got here for you is another problem. We're going to go ahead and take a look at this one. Now remember, uh, the perfect cubes, I I'm not going to ask you guys to memorize any perfect cubes. you got a calculator that will do it for you. So you go ahead and you go into that uh, math option, or I'm sorry, into that math function. Uh, there's a math button on your calculator and then choose option number four. And so you take the cube root of 16 and it doesn't come out to a nice number. Actually, 16 is not a perfect cube. You wind up getting a decimal. So I've got a problem here. 16 is not a perfect cube. I do the exact same thing. Math, option number four, and I take the cube root of 54 and again, I get a decimal which means 54 is not a perfect cube. And I think then that I'm sort of dead in the water, right? Because it can't be perfect cubes if 16 and 54 aren't perfect cubes. Um, but then I take another kind of look at it and I recognize, hang on a second, I have a GCF. This is where a combination of factoring methods is going to be really important that you always look for other factoring methods to kind of help you as you go. So what I quickly recognize is 16 and 54 have a GCF of 2. I can pull a 2 out of both of those, and both terms have an X in it. So I'm going to pull a 2X out first. There's my GCF, and then that leaves me with an 8X cubed plus. I pull a 2 out of 54, which leaves me with a 27Y cubed. Well, no surprise, or it shouldn't come as a surprise, 8 is a perfect cubed. 2 times 2 times 2 gets you an 8. And 27 is a perfect cube. 3 times 3 times 3 gets you 27. So all I had to do is recognize I have a GCF. Once I pull the GCF out, now it is a sum of perfect cubes. Here's what it's going to look like. 2x times 2 x cubed, so that would be my a plus 3y cubed, where this is now my b. All right, so please be very, very careful here because you have this 2x, that GCF, hanging out front there, right? This is my GCF that I pulled out. You want to be very careful that you don't lose that GCF. So here we go. Let me write my GCF first, 2x, and I'll put that guy in that little box so we don't forget that that was just the GCF that I pulled out of this guy. And now I'm all set. I'll use a bracket to kind of help distinguish between all this stuff for you. It's a sum of perfect cubes. So remember, that's going to be the first, the first quantity will be an a plus b. Well, my a is a 2x. My b is a 3 3y. So there's my first quantity. And then the next one was an a squared minus a times b plus b squared, right? That's the way that formula works. So here we go. I'm going to have an a squared. Uh, actually, we can do this all, right? This is my a and I'm going to square it. Well, 2 squared is 4. x squared would be an x squared. So 4x squared. And then I'm going to have minus a times b. Well, a is 2x, b is a 3y. I multiply those guys together. 2 times 3 is 6xy. So minus 6xy plus, then I need a b squared. Well, here's my b, and I'm going to square it. So 3 squared would be 9, y squared would be a y squared. So plus 9y squared. Close my bracket. Sorry, I'm kind of squeezing over there. Let me rewrite it for you. 2x is my GCF. Then I have a 2x plus 3y. Oh, this guy right here is my sum of perfect cubes. Right, so, so this was my GCF that I originally pulled out. I'm left with the sum of perfect cubes, which I factored right here. So now I'm just going to write out all of my factors. I've got the 2x, which was my GCF, and then I've got my two quantities, which represent the sum of perfect cubes. 4x squared minus 6xy plus 9y squared. And there you go.
you have successfully factored out that polynomial, right? Hey, let's go ahead and try another one because these are so much fun. I love these sum and difference of perfect squares. Lots and lots of fun. All right, here we go. So I take a look at this one. Again, feel free to use your calculator. Math option number four. You take a cubed root of eight, and of course you get two. Awesome. Math option number four. You take a cubed root of five, and you get a decimal, right? Five is not a perfect cube. Okay, so we've seen this problem before, right? We just dealt with that right up here, where 16 and 54 weren't perfect cubes, so I looked for a GCF. So I come back down here and think, all right, well, maybe I have a GCF. But 8 and 5 don't have any, um, don't have a GCF other than 1. And pulling out a 1 doesn't do you any good. And so once again, just like when doing the group and factor method, it turns out that this guy is not factorable. It's what we call prime. There's nothing you can do uh, to factor this guy. It's not a sum of perfect cubes. Um, it doesn't have a GCF. We don't have any method so far that would allow us to factor this polynomial. There's nothing you can do. You just write prime and move on. So let's do that. Let's move on to another one. And let's see what we've got here. Again, I take a look at this guy. Yeah, sorry. There he is. Take a look at this guy, and again, quickly I recognize, okay, well, hold on a second. I just saw this a minute ago. Five it is not a perfect cube. So once again, let's look for a GCF, and this time we do have one. Five and negative 320, they have a five in common. So I can pull a five out of all those guys. I also recognize I can pull a Y out of them. So let's do exactly that. I'm going to pull out a five Y. This is my GCF. And what's left over? Well, that's going to leave me with a y cubed. Awesome. And you, uh, minus 320, you pull out a 5, it leaves you with a negative 64. Well, guys, we've seen 64 before. It turns out that 4 times 4 times 4 gets you 64. This is a perfect cube. And so now I can rewrite this guy as 5y times a y cubed, so there's my a minus 4z cubed, so there's my b, this is a difference of perfect cubes, and this guy right here is my GCF. So here we go, 5y, again that's my GCF, don't lose him, don't lose him. And then in brackets, just to separate this stuff, I will now factor my difference to cubes. Remember the way the formula works? It's a minus b. So I'm going to do a, which is y, minus b, which is a 4z. And then that trinomial in the end was plus plus, right? The formula had a plus plus, so it was an a squared plus a times b plus b squared. So let's do that. a is a y, so I'm going to have a y squared plus a times b. a times b, so y times a 4z would just be 4yz, plus b squared. Well, my b is a 4z, so I square both of those guys. 4 squared is 16, z squared is a z squared, so plus 16z squared. I apologize, guys. I'm so sorry. I keep squeezing over there and run out of space. I got to write smaller, my bad. Uh, so again, anyway, this was our difference of perfect cubes. Look at that acronym, difference of perfect cubes. Um, and we'll write our final answer. Don't lose your GCF, 5y, and then y minus 4z, and then y squared plus 4yz, plus 16z squared. Okay, I think I got one more for you here. Um, I'll let you guys try this one on your own. Again, you're probably, if neither of these are perfect squares, look for that GCF um, and pull it out if you have one. But recognize if that doesn't work, it's totally possible that these guys could be prime. Head on over to the next page of the notes and we'll take a look at another factoring technique um, the last one that's known um, as quadratic form. I'll meet you guys there.